Okay, today's video is going to be about a specific budgeting type, and this type is called the 50 20 30 budget. So, this is going to be a new series on different types of budgets and different types of methods to help with, with your budgeting. So, what is the 50 20 30 budget? This budget is a is a personal finance methodology that divides your spending categories into three buckets and each one of these buckets is defined by a percentage. So the 50, 20, 30 categories are basically broken down into 50% for your essentials or fixed costs, 20% is for your future or financial goals, saving, that kind of thing, and then 30% is for your lifestyle or flexible spending. The 50% would include things such as mortgage or rent payments, uh, vehicle payments and utilities, essentials such as food, shelter, and transportation to and from work in order to generate the income. So for example, say you make $4,000 a month, then the 50% would look something like this. $800 would be for your rent slash mortgage. 400 could be for a car note. Uh, 500 say for groceries. And maybe 300 for utilities, which would include your, wa your water, your electricity, and your sanitation. Then we would move on to the 20%. And this is basically what is it important for your financial well-being in the future. So this is where you start taking care of yourself now so that your money would be able to take care of yourself, to be able to take care of you in the future. And this includes items such as retirement investing, uh, paying off debt, building up savings, paying off student loans, funding education if you have if you have children that will be going to to college or something or if you or your spouse would like to continue your education or are still in school, then this is the category that would that would cover that. It also includes items such as building up savings for big ticket purchases. So if you wanted to say buy a house in the next couple of years or something then this is where you would allocate the funds to be able to do that. It basically helps you to offset any big ticket big purchases instead of having to go into debt. So you don't want to go and get this store financing for this quote unquote zero percent financing or low interest financing or zero APR because what typically happens with those kinds of things is that it will be zero percent or a low interest rate for a small period of time and most people do not have the discipline to pay off whatever it is that they've purchased within that time frame either they don't have the discipline or they don't have the budget to be able to to pay it off and so they go and and instantly gratify themselves by purchasing something that in the long run is going to become a burden because once those interest rates kick in then you find yourself in a situation where you're constantly chasing the 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 payment so this is a good place for you to be because it will help you be able to to overcome that. Uh, this category also is important because it gives you a sense of security. Is There's nothing like having a couple of thousand dollars or tens of thousand dollars in the bank or if you're blessed enough to have hundreds of thousand dollars of a cushion that 
if life happens, which life will happen, then you can fall back on. You, you are not ruined, as it were, if, if you, if something happens. So, it could be anything. It could be a sickness. It could be, um, loss of income. It could be a job loss. If, if you've allocated funds into this 20% of your monthly income, then you'll be, you'll be okay. So the last category is the 30%. And this can be, um, called lifestyle, personal. It's labeled discretionary or non-essential on this, um, on this, uh, pie chart. But it could, you could, you could call it whatever you want to call it. And basically this category is for discretionary as well as variable monthly expenses. So it can include things such as your cell phone payments, your cable bill, eating out, going shopping, you know, if you have hobbies, entertainment, stuff like that, you know, trips to, I don't know, if you, if you enjoy going to Starbucks or something, the coffee shop, this is where that kind of stuff would fall in. And the most important thing to note is that in the event of any kind of financial issues or financial upheavals, this category is the first one that you need to slash, right? These are non-essentials. These are non like if, if, if you don't have that latte for the rest of the year, it's not going to kill you, you know. But if you don't have food that could potentially be life threatening. And so, this is always the category where if you can limit the cost, if you can limit your items in this category, then you'll be able to make more progress in paying down some of your other um, debt and also saving and, and securing your financial future. So some comments about the 50, 20, 30 rule for budgeting is that, you know, as you can see, it's, it's really basic. It's, it's really simple. It's a great place to start from because it, it gives you something to kind of, to kind of gauge. A lot of people say they would like to start budgeting. They would like to start getting their finances in order, but they really don't know where to start. They don't know where to begin. They have no idea what they need to do. And this is a good place to start. Now, these percentages may not work for you depending on your income and your current expenses. However, like I said before, it's a good place for you to start. For most people in the developed world and in the United States in particular, our biggest problem is really not that we don't make enough money. It's really that we spend too much of the money that we make. So this outline allows you to be in a position where you can manage you can manage your money monthly and then you can always tweak this as desired to fit your budget you know if if you want to if you would like to allocate even more to your saving and investing and that kind of stuff you could flip this you could have you know 30% be your saving and investing and then 20% be the discretionary personally that's something that I would like to see and I would like to work towards this because we just spend money on a lot of unnecessary things and a lot of things that nine times out of ten if you if you were to wait a week maybe even wait a day to make that purchase you'll find that it's 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 an impulsive purchase and when you get home and think about it and look at the numbers, you're like, man, I don't, I really don't need to make that purchase or I didn't need to make the purchase. And so you can always shift these numbers around. But this is basically for those people that say to themselves, I want to start. I need somewhere to, to, to start from, but I really have no clue as to how to do it, as to how to go about it. And so this is where 
you can start directing your money to be able to achieve your lifestyle that you want instead of looking up at the end of the month and wondering what happened to all the money that you made during the month. So once again, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And uh, as always, leave me comments, suggestions in the comment box if there's something that you'd like me to go over. If you have questions, if there's something that you would like to uh, for me to elaborate on. And um, hopefully this, this video has helped help somebody be able to take that first step towards achieving the financial situation. Always remember that the borrower is slave to the lender. And so we want to become financially free. So hope you guys have a good day and see you next time.